Hi guys, this is Mohammed, and today I'll be setting up secondary or slave DNS server. Um, for this, you'd have to have initial installation of your primary DNS already there. We will be making a few changes uh, just to specify that this is the secondary server, but other than that, the initial deployment has to be there. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and search into my secondary uh, VM machine right um, make sure you have uh, internet access because we will be installing a few packages okay ignore this part if you already had uh, internet access okay so install bind bind utils bind chroot bind types these are the packages that give us the dns service okay shouldn't take a long time right when that's done let's go ahead and configure name.con this is the main dns file configuration file um replace this with your ip address so my IP is 192.168.12.3 for this server. Disable recursion and disable caching. So this is optional, but it's a good practice. Uh, I already have my zone statement set up, so I'm just going to copy it here. So this is zone msm.net. That's my forward zone, right? Um, you'll have your own zone here type slave this is actually saying okay this is a slave server of this zone um, file msm.net.db this is the file that exists in the primary DNS server the name has to be same um, and this is the IP address of your primary DNS server so in my case it's 192.168.12.2 similarly here this is a reverse lookup zone um, this is I'm specifying this is a slave the name is you have to change the name I mean make sure the name is same from the primary DNS server and again this IP address here and that's done here when that is done we're gonna allow an exception for the zone transfer in SE Linux um, I highly discourage you to turn off the IC Linux. It's not a good practice. So uh, the exception can be achieved just by this one statement. Right, when that, well, that's doing. I'm going to SSH into my primary server here. Okay. Um, we're going to open the name.conf and change a few things. So all you have to change here is this this parameter allow transfer. You have to give the IP address of your secondary server here. So in my case is 192.168.12.3. So this is specifying okay um, allow transfer to this IP address. Right? You can specify a range of IP address here, or you can say okay you know what allow transfer to everybody. But it's not a good practice. Um, if you can just specify the IP address of the slave server. Um, that's that. Uh, we're going to open the firewall port um, UDP and TCP port 53 for DNS to communicate. Uh, 53 X J accept and UDP. Okay, and then we can go ahead and restart our name service. Here, um, go to CD var and check the permission on named. This should have named and named, so it's owned by the named daemon. To do that, we can say chown named named and or named. Right, this will change the permissions. If you look at it again, you'll see named name. So this will so when the zone transfer is occurring, it wouldn't give any any issues because sometimes it say open open permission denied right 
so that's that I don't think there's anything else that needs to be done okay we're gonna start our name service if everything was uh, proper then this starting the service will um, initiate the zone transfer and you would see it in your logs as well and you will see the actual files being transferred service name start okay uh, Uh, okay. Okay. Zone msm.net loaded. Right. And zone this, this loaded. Okay. So that was done. We should see the files in var named. If the zone transfer was successful, you will see the files were transferred. So we'll see, okay, so these were my zone files and now they're transferred msm.net.db and msm.netweb.db. Um, if you want to double check if you can resolve queries through your secondary server, make your server a client of itself. Uh, change the resolve con, say um, type search and your domain name and the IP address of your local machine, which you want to resolve to. Right, and if I say you know what ping my primary server and it should be able to resolve its IP address and ping it right and you can do NS lookup and check the other records as well that's pretty much it for the slave DNS server stay tuned I'll be doing root and cache later on thanks for watching and have a wonderful day thanks bye bye